Welcome to the People Leaders Podcast, the audio resource for managers and business leaders creating high-performing teams. Join leadership and team development experts Jan and Michelle Turkelson each week as they explore both subjects from every angle. Through practical tips, valuable insights, and compelling interviews with leadership experts around the world, you'll learn how to bring out the best in your staff and how to give your best as a leader. Well, hello, Michelle. Welcome to 2023. I know. <laughs> it's already um, off to a good start for a lot of people I know, which is great. Yeah, yeah. And, and we hope for those who are listening, it's um, you're included, <laughs> that you feel that it's off to a good start. Yeah. One of the things that I had been itching to do was our plan, as you know, Michelle, because being the MBTI type that I am, so I'm an ENFJ, I love to have a plan and I love to have that structure and order. And once we have a plan, then we're really clear on our roles and what we need to do. So this episode is all about planning for the next year. Now, we're, this year for us, we have made a decision that this is the year of the new and emerging leader. So most of our content, pretty much all of it, will be focused on the new and emerging leader. So if you are an aspiring leader, lucky you, you're going to get some great content throughout the year. However, if you're leading a team of people and you think that one of them is or a couple of them are new and emerging, you know, let them know about the podcast because we're going to have great content for that. And if you are an emerging leader, to be able to create a plan for your team is one of the most important skills, wouldn't you say, Michelle? Yeah, and I was just thinking even if you have an established team and you have been a leader for a little while, this could be a bit of a refresh refresh for you as well. Yeah. Okay. So let's have a look at what are some of those key areas that we're going to look at today when we take you through our presentation. Because in our presentation, we've got a 10 step team based planning framework and we're going to take you through all of them. So the first one, the first step that Michelle is going to go into a little bit more detail is the situation analysis. Then step two is how do you create a SWOT analysis and what is a SWOT analysis and why do you do it? We are going to look at the step three stakeholder analysis. We'll look at our team purpose. Now, if you are a business you might see this as what is your business purpose or your overall purpose. Team values. If you're in a large organization, you might already have values. If you're not, this is a great opportunity to create some values. And we're going to share with you some of our values as well. We'll have a look at setting objectives. So this is getting into the detail, you know, who does what. Then we'll look at what resources and support you need, which is step seven. Step eight is how do you shore up the plan? And this is a really important step that a lot of people miss out on, but it really does help to solidify it. Step nine is creating a a timeline. You know, what are those critical points? And then step 10 is monitoring and following up. You know, how do we keep the plan alive? So take it away, Michelle, step one. Okay, step one, situation analysis. A lot of people skip this part and they jump straight into setting objectives. And the beauty of this is that a situation analysis really gets everybody onto the same page in terms of what's been happening in the team, what went well, where where are we heading, where do we want to head. So it's actually coalescing all of these sort of little thought bubbles that are going on in everybody's head and getting it out there onto one page so that everybody is really on the same page. And so we call it a situation analysis. And the way that we have found works really well for teams is to start with a bit of a a reflection. And so when we say, okay, so let's reflect on the previous year, some people go straight into the team and the team dynamic side of things, or they go straight into the financials, or they go straight in and, and then they just tend to focus there. What we have found is a little bit of structure around these reflections can be very useful. And so the first thing is, You can reflect, so there are a couple of ways you do this, is reflect on these key areas such as financials. So what were our financials like last year? And you could do it month by month. If you have good record keeping, you can go, you can put a calendar up on on the board and go through January right through to December in each of these key areas. So that's super systematic way to do it. 
And so you reflect on how well did we do in our financials if we were to reflect on that. Our reflections on team learning and development, what did we do, how do we feel about it, what went well, what didn't go well, processes and operational excellence, when we reflected on that, what did we notice, customers, clients, and then marketing and social media could be another area that you reflect on. And so what you would do is you would then start with your reflections in each of these areas and then you have a look at, so what is the current state? As we are today, about to move into the year moving forward, how would we describe the current state in each of these areas? And you could either go positive, negative, you know, put a number from one to five, five being fantastic in a great position. It's really up to you as to how you decide to categorise that or the words that you use to frame that up. And then the next one is it's almost like dipping your toe in the water in terms of so what would we like to create in each of these areas? What would a desired state look like for our financials, for team development, for marketing, for customers, clients, those sorts of things? And then and then what, you know, this could take and I wouldn't skimp on this. This is such, this is going to give you such rich information that you will draw on throughout the rest of the plan. Is there anything that you would add to this? No, Michelle. So just so you know that these are our focus areas. So you yeah. might have different focus areas. And also, you know, in our template that we'll share with you, we also have action statements. So this could be something that you could capture. So when you are reflecting and someone, you know, you think, oh, actually, that's a bit of a missing piece for us. Where are we going to use that? Are we going to have a parking lot where we actually park all those things because we want to be able to capture things so so we just said action statements but you could say parking lot when you actually do this as well right so that's step one situation analysis and then step two is the SWOT so what are our strengths weaknesses opportunities and strengths and the reason why we do a SWOT is because you want to be really clear because Businesses change on a dime now, you know, like in, instead of doing the three-year plan, you might want to do every quarter or every six months because things are changing so rapidly and you want to be able to capture this. So the strengths, strengths are really characteristics of your team or your business or even your project that given it an advantage over others. So what are some of your strengths? And so some of the strengths could be the technical capability of your people. So it could be be that you have a tech strength that perhaps others in the project or in your business don't have. So really it is around characteristics. So they're more internal. Then you've got weaknesses. Now these are characteristics that place your team or your business or your project at a disadvantage relative to others. So what are some of the disadvantage? Now it could be that you don't have enough people in your team to be able to take on the project at the moment or you have high turnover. So what are those things that give you a bit of a disadvantage? Opportunity. So now we're actually capturing those external things. So elements that your business project or your team could exploit to its advantage. So what are the opportunities here? So you might have some clients that you've worked with before that will actually introduce you to a a new client and things like that. So what are some of those opportunities? And you've got threats. So these are elements in the environment. So that could cause trouble for your business or your project or your team. So that could be political, it could be environmental, you know, it could be the financial instability. So those are those external things. Now, the reason why we capture them is because we want to make sure that our objectives reflect those opportunities and maybe we need to mitigate some risks. And the way in which we've done this is we've actually had butcher's paper with strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. We've separated the teams and we've started, you know, like two people or three people at each area. And then we give them five minutes and then people kind of circulate. So at least you have a really broad idea of people's notion about what their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats are. Okay. And so step three, Michelle, 
Terrific. The next one is we have a look at stakeholders and stakeholders are different from clients. Stakeholders are anybody who is going to be either advantaged or disadvantaged by your success or failure. And so you would look at stakeholders almost like partners and people who you want to support in order for you to be successful and vice versa. And one really good way to do this is just really start with a brainstorm. Who do we believe to be our most important stakeholders and why? And then you ask a a couple of key questions. And that is, what, what do they currently think of us, these stakeholders? And what do we want them to say about us in, you know, six or 12 months time? And if you actually are not really clear about the answer to those questions, then that leads you to, you know, take on an action and that is to find out. So what do our stakeholders currently think of us? And, and that will highlight some of the gaps that you may have, or it may highlight some opportunities that you could leverage. Information is key here. And so really spend some time on understanding what your stakeholders think of you and what you want them to say about you and if they've got any feedback for you. And it's always a good idea to prioritise your stakeholders. So somebody who has a lot of power and influence over your business, you know, obviously you want to give them more time, energy and effort as opposed to somebody who doesn't have a huge impact on your success but you just want to keep them close. It may be just feeding them some information as opposed to actively engaging with an important stakeholder. And so this is a a pretty useful step in the process in order to gain insight as to what's working, what's not working in your business and what they think of you. Yeah. And again, thinking about, you know, do, will we need to create an objective around that if it's that important to us? And hint, hint, you always want to have an objective around your stakeholders. All right. Step four, our team purpose. Now, if you are an existing team, you might have already done your team purpose, but I think it's really worthwhile reviewing that. Or if you're an existing business, you might see it as what is the purpose of your business. So for Michelle and I this year, our purpose is you know, developing materials and enhancing the capability of new and emerging leaders. So all of our focus is around that particular area this year. And again, it was different from last year because we have seen the changing need and we are adapting to that environment. So team purpose, really it's a a statement and it's essential, I think, you know, in the ever-changing environment because it really allows the team and your individual the individuals in your team to remain focused in what they have to deliver and who they're responsible for. And it really ensures that you're delivering on your key focus at the right time and in the right way and you know your team purpose has questions like you know you know what is it that we're going to do who are we doing it for and why are we doing it and then you actually create a statement that solidifies that who we're doing it for and why we're doing it. And Michelle, is there anything else that you want yeah, to add yeah. to that? Yeah, a lot of people when they do this purpose statement think that it's a marketing statement that they, you mm. know, it's something that would go on brochures and things like that. This is not what that is. That would be more like a perhaps a vision statement or a mission statement. This is a, a this is very practical, very grounded. This is for your team and people within your organisation and perhaps your stakeholders identifying what it is we actually actually do each, you know, or almost each day, or, you know, is really grounded in practicality. So don't think about it as a marketing statement, make it as practical as possible. And you will, you can do that test. And, and that could be, you know, could somebody who doesn't know anything about your business read this purpose statement and get and get an understanding and appreciation of what it would be like to work in this team and what you actually do. So don't skimp on the words. Sometimes, you know, it could be a couple of paragraphs worth, but be practical and don't use sort of flowery words. And, and just know that another test is that if somebody new to the team comes in, they have a look at the purpose statement and they get an appreciation of what, what it is that you do and why you do it and who you do it for. That's right. So there's three steps. Describe what it is your team does or delivers and produces. Step two, who do you do it for? And again, that's what we talked about, your stakeholders and who are the most important stakeholders. And step three is why you do what you do and the final impact of that work, you know, to your client or your customer. 
All right. Next step. Next step, values. And Mm. a lot of teams or every organisation now has a set of organisational values. And when you think about, so why why do they have values? When you think about an organisation that first starts out, you know, they might have a couple of people, it's pretty clear as to, you know, what are the Um, principles that drive us. You know, we want to create this sort of product and we want to do it in this sort of way. And if you think about the relationship between your purpose and your values, your purpose is your what and your values is your how. So how are we going to go about delivering on this thing that we that we're responsible for delivering on? And so your values, you can think about them in terms of what are going to be those principles that will guide our behavior, how we treat each other, how we share information. And so values really are the the DNA, the essence, the character of your team. If you work for an organisation, you could use your organisation's values and look at, so how could our team bring those values to life as we execute on our purpose, on our team purpose? Or you could be a team that decides we're, we're going to have our own team values and you could start by looking at, so what are our personal values? And and that's exactly how Jan and I started ours. You know, one of our top values that we both agreed on was learning. We love, you know, we're lifelong learners and freedom is really important to us. And so we actually were able to embed those into our business as business values. And so it would start with a bit of a brainstorm perhaps with your team. You know, what are the values that are, you know, important to you? What are the values that are important to us collectively that would guide our behaviour? You could call them principles, but, you know, we, we like the word values. And and then you go from there. And here's an example of ours. One of our values was always better. Uh, good enough is good enough, but even just slightly better is so much better. <laughs> That was our little catchphrase. And the way that we then stepped through it was, you know, we maintain an attitude of, so this is bringing that always better value to life, continuous and never-ending improvement. So above the line thinking was another way that we would maintain that attitude of always better and taking ownership, like really taking ownership of our successes and more importantly, our failures. The daily litmus test for us was, did I surprise and delight anybody that I work with today? Or did I surprise and delight myself (laughs) with my work today? And the I I really like the way that we've done our litmus test because values can just be principles and very esoteric sometimes. They're just sort of ideas or concepts. But when you can ground them in your actions and reflect on, okay, so did I live my values today? Did we do that? Then through that daily litmus test, you are bringing your values to life. And, you know, the research shows that those people who have their personal values in alignment with the work values or business values are a lot more constructive, engaged, and usually more successful. All right, so that's the step five values. And now we're going to have a look at step six objectives. So this is when we're really getting into the the nitty gritty of the, the planning. And What I would say around objectives is you want to then have a look at the things that you've captured in your car park from your situation analysis, your stakeholder, the team purpose. Did every anything come up that you need to, you know, like really start to put in those key focus areas? So remember, we had about five key focus areas. I wouldn't have any more than seven, definitely no more than seven. But if you can keep it to, you know, like three to seven, that's usually good. So these are an objective, what we want to achieve, you know, what are the actions and how are we going to get there? You want it to be specific. You want it to be quantifiable. You want to have realistic targets that measure the accomplishment of the goal, you know, over a specific period. Then you want to describe what those results are must achieve and you want to describe what success looks like in terms of those, you know, specific measurements and the outcomes that you're hoping or that you want, you know, obviously you want to make them realistic so you'll be able to achieve them. So I, we want to share with you what we have done in relationship to that and One of our objectives or the key focus areas was our customer and clients. And so with the 
the template, we had the key focus area and it was customer and client. So for you, it could be that or it could be around your processes, operational excellence. And then we had what was the objective. So be a, you know, so make sure that you have a specific and smart objective around that. What is the measure? So how will you be able to measure that? So is it going to uh, through an engagement survey? Is it, you know, customer satisfaction, feedback? Then we want to know who is accountable for it. What are the actions? So, and this is really important. So what actions are going to allow you to support that objective and to achieve that? And after each action, you have who is responsible, by when, and what resources that you need. So this is going to be a template that we will share with you. And then we've done this for each of our key focus areas. Now, what we've also done with our objectives is we've made them into quarterly. So we've done a one-year objective for each area, and then we're doing quarterly objectives for each one. So again, depending on what your business or your team has the capacity for, that's what we you know, you have to be flexible. Is there anything that you would want to share with that? Yeah. Yeah. So at the very, very beginning, when we did our situation analysis, we looked at the desired state. This is when, you know, before, because for some people, this can, this is really the nuts and bolts of the planning session. Mm. And you need to have everybody on board. Everybody should have come along the journey to get to this point, because this is this is the litmus test, really. So go back to your situation analysis and have a look at. So what was our desired state in terms of financials? Now, does that still apply given that we've done our SWOT, our values, looked at it, who our key stakeholders are, looked at what's happening in the external environment? And, and have a look at, so what is our desired state? Is it in terms of each of those areas? And then you will then start developing an objective. So don't feel so it has to be specific, measurable, realistic with a time frame in order for it to be a good objective. Just get something on paper and you can refine and refine as you go. Okay, next steps. I think it's okay. step seven. Yeah, so what is step seven, Jan? I think it's about resources, Shelley. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, that's right, resources and support. So quite often we'll do our planning and we'll set some objectives and, you know, and then we'll realise, gosh, in order to achieve all those objectives, we are going to need money and some support. And so this is just an opportunity for you to carve out some thinking and some actions around, so what sort of resources will we need in order to achieve those objectives and what sort of support will we need? And so I would do that, we would do that for each of your objective. So what are the resources that we need? Are they financial? Are they time-based? Are they skill? Like, do we need some skills? Is that a resource that we need? Do we need some social media support? Like, what are some of those resources and support? This could be just a brainstorm. Mm, so mm. for each objective, go through in the financials, what is going to be the resources that we need in order to achieve that objective? And do we need support either internally or external, ex externally in order to achieve that? Yeah. So for example, for us with our financials, we realized that we needed more support from our accountant and our bookkeeper. So we have made a monthly catch up so we can create a bit of a business dashboard. So that was Perfect. an example. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So that's step seven. Step eight is reviewing the plan. Now, as a judger in the Myers Briggs, wanting to, you know, our favorite words are done and next, we were kind of like, yeah, yeah, come on, let's complete the plan. This is a really important time for the team to just, you know, spend a couple of minutes just having a look, you know, go around the room or if you're on Zoom or, you know, doing it virtually, is just do a little bit of reflection of where we are and our objectives and does it align to our purpose and vision and the feedback that we've been getting. And reviewing the plan. I would ask two questions. So what do we need to let go of? Because some teams just keep on adding and adding. And yeah. that's why we only need a couple of, you know, like maybe five to seven objectives because you want to make sure you nail them, you know, set yourself mm. up for success. So what do we need to let go of? And then what are we going to do now that is not in the plan? Like have we missed anything? So, again, those questions just prompt a, a 
another level of thinking that perhaps you wouldn't if you were just going to rush through it. Yeah. So review yeah. the plan is step eight. Yeah. And so so to that to that last point, Jan, sometimes our day-to-day activities get lost and you think, oh, so how does that link? Like we're doing these objectives, but how does that link to the day-to-day things mm-hmm. that we're doing? Just like you said, put that in the plan. Put your, you know, your day-to-day activities or not day-to-day activities, those, the work that you do on a regular basis needs to go in the plan. So for example, you know, if you're a business and you know that every month you need to review review client records that is an objective that goes into the plan if it's it's a big chunk of work and then you step back like you were saying Jan and saying oh okay so is that everything that we do currently mm-hmm. we'll put that we put that in the plan that could be one objective or it could be a couple of objectives or you could find that it fits under some of those different categories but don't forget to put the stuff that you're doing now into the plan and also don't forget to take out those things that you know really aren't that important now or not or aren't relevant because you can't just keep adding 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 every year it doesn't work and we've seen teams become oh I don't almost stifled and dysfunctional because that and stressed out because they just keep adding 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 yeah demotivated yeah so the next one step nine is Create a timeline. If you don't schedule around your priorities, you are doomed to fail personally, professionally, and as a team. And so that's all we're doing now. We are just scheduling in these objectives and putting them on a timeline, whether it's a group calendar, whether it is an actual, I've seen teams have an actual timeline and put their objectives at the top of the line and then who's responsible at the bottom. And and then they can start to plot other things that are going on in the business or the environment, public holidays, all those sorts of things. So it is a really, really good tool to have a timeline definitely and then plot when those objectives are due onto that timeline yeah because what we've seen is that when you start to actually see it all the objectives <laughs> drop in a certain kind of yes. like one or two months and that's, that's when they're it. doing their financial and they're like oh okay yeah so it, it sounds like a lot of work but I tell you what when you have a really mm. robust plan Mm. you're going to get the benefits of role clarity. You're going to understand expectations. You know when you're on track. You know when you're off track. And that's why step 10 is really important, is the monitoring and following up. You know, how do we keep this plan live? And so the agreements might be that we're going to have Um, in our weekly meetings or monthly meetings, we're just going to review the plan for 10 minutes just to see how we're going with it. You know, is there something that we've missed we need to take out? So I think that's really important. And two is, you know, how often are you going to check up and check in? So if you can agree on those, so how do we keep the plan alive? So do you actually have it up on a wall or do you in your agenda? You know, like I think something tangible is going to be really important. And that's what we've done, Michelle, isn't it? You know, like, We've actually done a plan on a page and we're going to share with you our plan on a page because we just think that when you see something on a regular basis, it really just does help the the mind to settle with, ah, that's where we're going, that's what we're doing. So in our plan on a page, we have that the up the top we've got this is the year of the emerging leader so it's kind of like our purpose you know this is the thing that's really driving us this year and then these are the columns that we have we have our focus areas so we have and these are the the focus areas that we that we had mentioned you know financial team operational excellence etc then we have Uh, the focus for the year. So what is the focus for the year financially, operational customers? Then we have our objective. So what is the quarter one objective? Then we have quarter two objective, quarter three, quarter four. Now we haven't completed those quarter three and four objectives and we've only really completed quarter one and quarter two objectives because again, you want to be agile in your planning as well. Then we have a monthly focus and then we have a weekly focus. So for example, our monthly focus in our financials is to review our financial headlines with the bookkeeper. And then we have a weekly focus is that we're going to focus on our invoicing and incoming payments. So they're just an example. And then down the bottom, we have our vision, you know, like what is our overall purpose? 
Mm. And, the, you know, this is such an important step in the process, keeping the plan alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, having done this for over 20 years or so with, with various different teams, the teams that do actually achieve some really great things over the course of the year are the ones that their plan. They don't just do it, have that team session, everyone's motivated, and then off they go and do their normal work. They keep it alive by bringing it into their team meetings. They will have a quarterly review and even six-weekly review and then people take those objectives that they're responsible for and then they will do something and then, you know, maybe do a plan on a page for themselves for all the objectives that they're responsible for. And so I can't stress enough that you need, it's not enough just to do the plan, you need to execute the plan is really important. Yes, mm. and, uh, yeah, plan on the page is a great idea. Yeah. So Michelle and I did our planning session over two sessions and we did it virtually. So sometimes we'll do it face to face, sometimes virtually. And it worked really well Mm. because we were both motivated to do it. And I think, you know, that's the most important thing, you know. So how do you get your team engaged? Yeah. And we had a process. You know, for, for some people, oh, we're going to get, go and do a planning and it's like, oh, okay, we are, where do we start? What we've given teams now and what you have now is a process and it's, it, it's, not, it's not difficult. It just requires a little bit of time. Yeah, and sometimes it does get messy when you're yeah. trying to quantify what those measurements of success are and to yeah. create a smart objective yeah. and things yeah. like that. But yeah. if you get stuck, just go on. At least you've captured it. That's yeah. the most yeah. important thing. Just kind of, yeah. you know, spend a couple of hours and you might want to break it into two parts. So we did it into two parts. You know, the yeah. first we did, you know, like one to five and then the rest we did in our next session. Don't leave it too long between sessions if you can't do it in a full you know um, half day or full day session or sometimes people take two days to do their planning because they use it as a team building activity and I think it's one of the most effective team building activities because the team are engaged in something that is meaningful for them and that is going to you know impact them as well I think that's you know the best team building don't you think Michelle oh without a doubt Jen you know working on work is one of the best ways to build a team. <laughs> yeah, and have fun and go out to eat yeah. <laughs> and all yeah. those yeah. other things. But, yeah, it is one in the in the mix. So, yeah, we really encourage you to have a go at the team-based planning. And if I was to set up my team for a team-based planning session, I would actually give them the 10-step process at yes. the before so they can actually start to reflect. So you want to prime people to think about those responses before you actually get them in the room or on on your you know in your team meetings on your team so good luck with it we'd love some feedback if you have any questions please reach out and remember this is the year of the new and emerging leader and as a new and emerging leader you really want to have this under your belt because if you know how to actually create a plan and then be able to communicate that it's going to be a really useful resources and tool for you great okay ciao bye We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the People Leaders Podcast. For show notes and other resources, please visit us at peopleleaderspodcast.com. While you're there, you can subscribe for future episodes so you can continue your own leadership journey. And please be sure to share this and other episodes with your friends and colleagues. The People Leaders Podcast is brought to you by the Experts On Air Podcast Network.